as you'll have noticed, I'm, I'm British. Uh, so it's a little bit like being Canadian. We also apologize all the time. So I'm, I'm going to start, start by saying I'm sorry. I, I'm, 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 not <laughs> I'm not going to uh, give you some super slick presentation today. Um, I know when you saw me, actually, I haven't even managed to get onto the first. Look, there you go. Uh, that's quite slick. Um, <clears throat> I know when you saw me, you thought dry ice and played into Eye of the Tiger or something. But, uh, but yeah, really, I just what what I what I really rather do today is is kind of talk through uh, a, a few different things about what we're doing on on Ad Age. I, I, um, and and then I guess my second apology, if we're going to go for two sorries before uh, before I've even started, uh, is that I am going to talk primarily about Ad Age, and, I, and I'm not doing that. Um, and we'll, we'll get to Rogers, of course. Um, I'm not doing that uh, in a boastful way. I'm not doing that because uh, I think uh, advertising age is so fantastic. Um, in fact, in some ways, uh, I'm doing that because, because of the opposite, because I think advertising age is a classic example of a publication that's kind of caught in the maelstrom of, of all the different forces that are kind of uh, making time so turbulent in, in business publishing today. Um, so, I mean, the, the first thing to say about us, the, 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 the upside of the story is that our information, I suspect all of your information, is in, in more demand than it's ever been. Our total readership, obviously thanks to the web, uh, has increased in the last decade from about 250,000 readers to over 900,000. Um, and we've been on the web since 1992, uh, yet we're still experiencing about 20% year-on-year traffic growth. So, I mean, I'm bound to say this, being the, being the editor of that age, I'm bound to say that, that I think the product is in good shape and that there's demand for the information, um, but, but I think the numbers, the numbers bear that out. Uh, but like many people out there, our business model was based very, very heavily on print advertising. And uh, as we all know, print advertising is in a lot of trouble. I and mean, we're here talking about business media, but I think this is also true in, in the consumer space. Um, and I personally don't believe that's just about uh, a small matter of a global recession. I, I think it's about the cost per thousand for the advertiser. I think it's about the poor levels of accountability um, in print advertising. And of course, as with every media, it's about the increase in other options. But I think it's, uh, it, it, it wouldn't be exactly giving away the state secrets to say that ad ages, print, rev print ad revenue uh, is in decline, will certainly decline this year um, and declined last year. We're also subject to forces when it comes to print advertising, particularly the forces of consolidation, which I'm sure affect a lot of you in a lot of your industries. We've also suffered, like everyone else in publishing, from the internet's tendency uh, to give information that used to be valued very highly away for free. And uh, that's something that's making it ever harder for us to demand subscription fees from our customers. <clears throat> and um, the fact is, it's just a battle for the audience's attention and time today, I think, is a, is a phenomenal battle. And, the barriers to entry have been lowered, and even in you know what would seem to be a, a sort of our B two B space of covering the marketing and media business, um, you know you you no longer need a printing press and trucks and a forest full of paper to to compete with Ad Age, and and you can get a free blogging platform off the web, and five minutes later you're the newest industry authority, and we compete with. As, as I'll talk a little bit later, we compete with about a thousand of those people who now think they're the newest industry authority. So um, obviously what we've had to do is start to try and evolve a bit of business model. And I just want to take you through a few of the things that I think, I think point the way, at least for us, to, to how we will, uh, we will monetize our, our business in the future. Um, and I hope that some of them are in some ways useful for, for some of you. Um, so clearly there's no magic bullet, but I think the first thing, uh, the most obvious thing, is that all of us, I feel, have got to put some emphasis back on the consumer to pick up the cost of us producing this information that they, 
that they really have this demand for. So one of the things we started to do several years ago was look at what information we had that we could actually charge a, uh, a premium price for. And what we came up with is we've always collected an awful lot of data on the industry. Um, we've tended to monetize that in the past by putting it into special reports. Here's our quantification of the top 100 media companies. Here's our quantification of all the top advertisers. Here's our quantification of those top advertisers, top brands. Uh, here are all the different people who work on those brands, all those kind of things that we've been collecting together for years and years and years. And, and you know, really, they had just been like, oh, this will be one special report in our print weekly, and we'll sell ads against it. And we realized we had so much data there that was, was never being surfaced, and data that was clearly uh, very valuable to our readers. So uh, we went and looked around at some different solutions to, to kind of bring that uh, bring that to bear on the web and take it from our existing databases that we had it in to a system where it couldn't be scraped, it was encrypted, it couldn't just be stolen by someone um, so that if we locked it down we could actually ensure that we could get, get some value out of it and we did and we turned it into a premium subscription at the beginning of last year so our regular subscription is 99 bucks um, <clears throat> And now our data center, if you want to uh, access that separately, is, is 349. And, uh, and that's been very successful for us. We've already got well over 1,000 people who've signed up for that service with us. And it's allowed us to basically take uh, a group of people who I was constantly fighting with the, the publishing side of the organization. Not that I'm not saying you publishers aren't lovely people, but I was constantly doing battle with them, uh, uh, with them all seeing this as a cost center and potentially something to be cut. And it's, it's, they've actually been turned into, the guys who do that work have now been turned into a profit center. Um, I think the other major thing that we've done at Ad Age, and I'm sure many of you had already done this, it's hardly rocket science, um, but we started seeing ourselves as, you know, knowing we collected all this stuff, knowing we had all these reporters who did all this analysis, we started trying to see ourselves as a research company and to sell our products a little bit more uh, like that. And it actually started with a thought we were writing a lot about commercial ratings in the TV industry. Um, and it started with the thought I was watching how much stuff we were cutting, was never going to be published, how much research we'd done. And I said, well, you know, would it be interesting? Could we sell that in, in a white paper or a research paper? Um, so we've actually started selling uh, a few different uh, research papers, white papers, whatever you want to call them. And, and this has been very successful for us as well. And, and, and you know, I mean, to the editor, I have to say, it's kind of enormously frustrating. It's incredible that the latest one we just put up, this 2010 America, what the census means for marketing and advertising, we're charging $249 for that. So that's two and a half times the price of our subscription. And, uh, and, and we've already had uh, hundreds and hundreds of people uh, come in and pay for that. So for some reason, package like this, the information is valuable enough to them that uh, we can get up to $249, but we find there's no, not that much price elasticity in, in trying to push up our $99 price uh, subscription for a whole year's worth of everything I and, and my team slaves over. It, it kind of kills me, but, but at least this is another way that we're, we're, getting, to, uh, we're getting to monetize it. Um, We've also uh, we've done a little bit of, of trying to sell stuff directly, and I think this is very interesting to me, particularly in the consumer space. Uh, I know National Geographic, for example, has had uh, some success actually selling its own its own products to some of its readers. And I think the Guardian, if you look in the UK, uh, paper I used to do a bit of work for, but I think they've done a terrific job of becoming a sales operation also for their readers, whether it be selling them concert tickets to things that they know their readers will be interested in or selling them uh, music and, and books and so on. And we've done some of the same stuff. So that, there's our bookstore. Um, and, uh, you know, so we sell marketing and media books for, through an Amazon affiliate program. We also have a, a blog on the site which is called... Uh, uh, songs for Soap, which is about music being used in commercials and so on, and we sell the songs through that. They're not going to make us rich anytime soon, um, but uh, I just think it's an interesting idea that publishers can get into direct sales to, to their readers where, where that's sort of relevant and interesting. Um, obviously, today, you know, I feel like social media is such a big part of, of everything we hear talked about in 
the media and marketing space, and it's important for us as well. And just take a quick spin through some of the ways in which we've used social media. Um, I mean, basically, more than anything else, with, with these products, it's been a chance for us to reach audiences that we really couldn't effectively reach before. Um, if you take uh, the bottom one there, small agency diary, we always had this dilemma where the, the, there were more small agencies out there than there were big agencies, but really to cover them in a news weekly format was incredibly difficult because you were hitting on, you were talking about some agency in Albuquerque, New Mexico, you were probably leaving that might be of interest to 10, specific interest to those 10 readers, but you're probably leaving, you know, 890,900 whatever behind. And, and it was really, it was kind of an accidental discovery. We started talking to a couple of these guys about just blogging for us regularly. And before very long, we had uh, a, a mini army of these people who worked at small agencies talking about the issues that face them daily from in the trenches. And, and it's really got very, very strong readership. And it's allowed us to cater to them, to be a place that they come and discuss their issues um, that we, we probably couldn't have done in a sort of more traditional reporting style. Um, the same is true of the Big Tent, which is our multicultural blog, uh, where these guys who are all from multicultural agencies and multicultural marketers discuss their issues. Uh, digital Next is, is fairly obvious. It's kind of the blog side of our reporting on digital media. And Gen Next, which is kind of, a, it tends to be graduate students who are doing different marketing and media courses um, and, and sort of first and second year employees talking about the issues of being a, a youngster coming into the workplace today. Uh, and obviously monetizing those, you know, again, we don't just want to be stuck on, we're, we're just going to try and get, you know, internet ads because we all know that the CPMs there aren't so great either, even if you are a, a specialist offering as we are. Um, but uh, they have obviously all drawn traffic, and we found a few other ways to monetize them. I mean, the world is full of ad award shows. Uh, we certainly, when we were looking at different things we could do, one of the things I was very clear about, and again, fought with the publisher about, was I don't want to create another ad award show. It's just not something that the world needs. It's just not something there's any demand for from our audience. But one of the things the small agency diary threw up through a couple of the posts was that these guys were very frustrated that they were never represented in any of these shows. So we, for the first year this year, created a, a small agency awards, limiting it to people with 75 employees or less, 50 or less overseas, and launched that. And again, a successful initiative for us. We made a little bit of money off it, and, and I think next year we'll make uh, a little bit more. Um, and Gen Next actually spawned an idea, uh, another product that we've created called Ad Age on Campus where we license uh, the, the uh, content of Ad Age on a sort of more of a Bloomberg terminal by terminal basis to a number of different schools. I think we're up to about 13 schools at this point. Um, so that the students are essentially getting access to the information for the equivalent of about a, a buck a year. Um, while we're talking about blogs, I sort of feel like aggregation <coughs> for those of us who have historically, and I include myself even with just my 16 years, have been in the business of creating original content, I think aggregation uh, can seem like such a negative force. You know, it's a, there's some you know, idiot sitting out there in his pajamas in his bedroom somewhere uh, taking the best of your content, your rival's content, the national newspaper's content, pulling it all together. He's actually creating nothing original, but he's taking your traffic and taking your readers and, and so on. But um, I think our Power 150 is, is an example of turning it into a more positive force. And, and what we did here was is basically just sort of stumbled across the idea of, of creating a ranking for all the blogs that were about marketing and media. Uh, so they submit their blog, they get ranked according to a number of different metrics. And so far we've got over a thousand blogs who've submitted and are now on this, this ranking. So a thousand people who consider that they cover media or marketing, which shows you how many ways we could have been sliced and diced. But at least in this one way, we're bringing them together for something they want to see where they're ranked, where they appear. <clears throat> They can get a little badge that sits on their website and you know has their current score on 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 their website um, and it's been quite it's been quite smart for us it's given us another 
another avenue for promoting things. We, we've worked with them in a couple of different ways. We probably haven't done enough with it as yet, um, but I think you, know, you can even see it could have the potential if we wanted to, and if they were happy to get involved, you could even be creating an ad network, uh, be a specialized ad network that would have a slightly higher CPM than your average ad network, but uh, you can see how we could actually do something something quite powerful with that. And of course, uh, we do video. Uh, I mean, I think what I, what I would say about this is, um, you know, I don't think in any way what we're seeing is uh, advertising going away, but what I, what I think we have seen is that marketers are, are looking all the time, and I'm sure you experience this every day, they're looking to reach an audience and they're looking at you as someone who can deliver that audience, not as someone who delivers it through just one specific platform. And, and so, you know, I think that it's been very important to us over the last three or four years to really try to create something where we had a range of different potential platforms and solutions to draw on for those advertisers. And video is really one of those. I mean, it was something, you know, it's obviously exciting to get into from an editorial point of view. Um, uh, uh, very, very different to anything most of us. Most of us had been sort of historically print journalists, some of the younger guys, web journalists. But uh, to, to get into video was kind of an interesting thing for us. And we created Three Minute Ad Age, which started out as a, as a daily uh, video product. Um, it's now down to being a two, three times a week video product. And, and I mean, what I would say about it in terms of, of monetizing it for, for, the, for the publishers among you is, is it has been a little tougher to monetize and, and, and it's obviously it's an expensive time consuming undertaking. I think everyone always underestimates the editing part of it if you're used to delivering a highly professional uh, product. It's, it's a tough one to, tough one to to do. The note I would like to finish on about ad age and that I think is particularly interesting if you have the, uh, the skills and, and uh, the talent that I believe you, you have here in Toronto and in Canada um, is, is just how big the global market is and how great the global opportunities are out there right now. And ad age, you know, in the, in the same time over the last three years that our audience has grown probably from about 600 to 900,000. The percentage of that that, has, uh, that is from overseas has, has grown dramatically. I think it's up to about 25% of our total audience now, with an awful lot of those coming from China. Um, and uh, obviously, those are some exciting growth markets for us to get into. And uh, you know, we're lucky enough to have um, some licensing partners that, that, that you know, can help us uh, sort of understand what's going on in those markets and, and whose content we're very keen to get our hands on. Um, but we've also you know, built a network. We've got a couple of part-time reporters around the world and we've got a, a network of increasing network of bloggers and, and just trying to filter some of the best and, and the brightest stories from around the world. We're not going to pretend to be uh, the leaders in any of those individual marketplaces because clearly they're already just as crowded as our marketplace is, but just kind of uh, putting yourself in the space as someone who's going to be pulling together global information, I think makes you interesting to, to lots of those markets out there. And certainly, it seems to be working that way for us. And again, it's about broadening the audience, people we can sell those products to and sell full-time subscriptions to and, and, and so on. And uh, I know it's very obvious, but I do think people sometimes overlook the fact that they are essentially global now. You don't have to have any boundaries, and I think that's got a lot of potential for all of us. So um, I don't know whether there, any of that was useful, but I'll, I'll finish off with that. Thank you.